Yeah, maybe I should do a wrap. How to improve your credit score. How, five steps to improve your credit score. Automate, prioritize, diversify, age, monitor. Those are the five steps that you gotta take to improve your credit score. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna talk about five steps to improve your credit score today. Five actionable tips that will actually have a measurable impact on your credit score. I'm talking about how I was able to go from the low 600s in credit score all the way up to an 858 score. So you can do it too. And here's why it's so important. So your credit score impacts all of the lending that you do. A lender looks at your credit score to determine the likelihood that you're going to make their payments on the loans in which they give you. So it's going to affect, one, will you be approved to get that mortgage, to borrow that money for that business, for that property, for whatever it is that you're looking to buy. The second thing is the cost of that debt. And cheap debt is very powerful. As you guys know, I talk about the value of leverage on my channel. So having a good credit score not only can help you if you're a renter to find a place to live, it can help you in a job application, it can help you in many different fields, it can help you borrow and build businesses. So let's get to it. The five steps to improve your credit score. One, you need to automate. Two, you need to prioritize. Three, you need to diversify. Four, you need to age. And five, you need to monitor. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's get into the details of these five actionable steps that you can remember. And I'm gonna say it again at the end of the video, just like I did at the start. So I wrote these out for you because I thought it would be a little bit cooler if I wrote it on a piece of paper for you guys. Do you guys see that? Pay debt on time. Okay, so I talked about automating as my first step on the journey up to basically heaven and getting your credit score from the down lows all the way to the way highs of the mid to high 800s. So paying your debt on time, that should be simple. You need to make payments on all of the different types of credits in which you have open, all of the different bills in which you owe on time. Prompt payment is over a third of the impact of your overall credit score. So even if you don't have all the money to make the payment, let's say you owe money on a credit card, even if you can put 10 or $15 down to make sure you made a payment on that card, that is so impactful to your bottom line. It will help keep your credit score high. It's not gonna save you on the interest fees you're gonna pay, but at least your credit score will be improved. So what I always recommend is automate everything. I have automatic payment set up on all of my credit, on every single property, on every single utility that I pay, on my cell phone, on my internet bill, on, on everything, on all my lines of credits. I have automatic withdrawals set up for the minimum payment. So usually that's 10 or $15 here in Canada. Definitely recommend that. Automate it, set it, and forget it. You'll be on your way to a lot happier, a lot better credit score. Number two. Pay down debt. And I talked about prioritizing. So I wanna talk specifically about which debt do you pay down first? Because everyone talks to me and they say, Mike, you talk about good debt, you talk about bad debt. How do I know what debt to pay down? What will have the greatest impact on my credit score? Well, it's not so simple because every situation is a little different, but I'll give you some general rules of thumb and I'll start with an example. So imagine you have a credit card that's a thousand dollar available limit and you go and buy something at the store, call it a, a laptop for $800 and you go make that purchase on your credit card. And let's say you have also a student line of credit. You have a line of credit at the bank for student loans that for $50,000. Most people prioritize trying to pay down the mortgage or trying to pay down the line of credit on their student loan or their car and they neglect paying down the credit card. Believe it or not, the minute you make that purchase for $800 on that credit card, your utilization on that card goes to 80%, right? 800 out of 1,000. And that has a huge impact on your score if you maintain that over many months. So you need to, one, I would actually recommend paying it down before it's due, but two, you need to also focus on making sure you pay down that debt first. A lot of people are making minimum payments on their credit cards when they should be focusing on paying down that short-term revolving debt first before they focus on things like the mortgage, right? Too many people I talk to are paying down their mortgage aggressively, putting $1,000 extra lump sum payment down on things like their car loans and their, and their house loans, when they should be focusing on their credit card debt and their short-term high interest debt that is having a bigger impact on their credit score. So prioritize the debt that you pay down. And of course, if you can, pay all of the bad debt down. I don't recommend paying down your mortgage actually. And you can check out a different video about my thoughts on why you should keep good cheap debt and why leverage is a good thing in many cases. Um, so anyway, let's get on to the third thing. Diversify. Remember I talked about diversification? Diversify your credit types. So diversifying your credit types, what is that all about? Okay, you need to have, the lender wants to see that you can maintain many different types of credit. 
So if you just have a credit card and that's your only source of credit, you're not going to be able to build a resilient and high credit score. So really break into those higher scores. Lenders want to see you have many different types of credits. So one of the recommendations I got when I was 18 looking to buy my first property and I was going out there and I had my credit card and I had a little bit of student, student debt revolving line of credit. They said, Mike, you need to find more types of credit. We want to see that you can handle different diversities of credit. So you want to diversify the credit holdings that you have. So that means getting short-term revolving stuff, long-term fixed loans, and medium-term loans. So I went to the bank and I fixed in my line of credit for one year and made steady payments for an entire year. I went and opened different types of credit cards. So I opened a consumer big box credit card as well as a MasterCard and a Visa having and an Amex, having different types of credit. I went and got a mortgage eventually, I got approved for that. I got a, you know, you could get a car loan or you can open a, an unsecured line of credit. There are so many different types of credit. You can go get a cell phone plan and pay that each and every month. Put your internet bill on automatic payment on your credit card each and every month. All of those things show in your credit report as you making consistent payments and having the ability to manage many different types of credit. So then if you're looking to get more credit in the future, the, the bank and the lender can see that you're able to make payments on many different types of credit and handle many different types of credit effectively. Okay, sorry, I lost my, my cue here. Uh, where are we? Okay, number four, um, we're talking about age. But I wrote here, don't open, don't open too much credit and don't close credit accounts. So a lot of people, they finish for the credit card, they get a better one with 2% cash back and their old card gave them no cash back. So they just close that credit card. Don't do that. You want to keep that, if you have a history on that credit card for say two or three years and you go and close that, that's going to drop your average age of credit way down because you're going to have a bunch of new credit that you've applied for and your older credit that was helping your average age of credit and showing you have an established history closes and it's removed from your credit um, age history on the, on the actual credit report. So don't close old credit, maybe rip the card up, sure, but if it has no fee, keep that credit card open. I have one from since I was 18 that I almost never use, has a $500 limit. I maybe like once every six months will go buy, you know, uh, some groceries for 10 or $20 on the card just to keep it active and show that I'm still using it. But that, that card helps my average age because I've had that card now for, for almost eight years, nine years. So that really has helped build a lot of, a lot of history for me, uh, having that eight years on that one credit card. The same is true for, for talking about, um, you know, opening too much credit. So just because I told you to diversify in the last point, now we're talking about age, right? So we're gonna automate, we're gonna prioritize, we're going to um, diversify, but in the diversification process, you need to do that slowly. If you go and apply for 10 pieces of credit all at once, you go apply for 10 mortgages and 10 lines of credits and, and five credit cards, that's going to affect your score negatively because each application hit, each hard application hit costs you three to five points. Now a soft, soft inquiry doesn't cost as much as a hard inquiry, but every time you open new credit, it does take five, three to five points off of your score right away. And we're not even talking about the utilization if you start using that. We're simply right now talking about just opening the account up. So open things out, open things up over, you know, over time, maybe um, every month or two. Don't do it all in one week, all right at once. Don't batch it, spread it out. Um, so yeah, very, very important to maintain the age of your credit. And last, and also actually, I think one of the most important things is know your credit report. So the last one I talked about monitoring your credit. You need to know your credit. And so I say down here, risk factors and errors. So when you know your credit report and you go get that, go to creditkarma.com. Um, it's a great website. I'm a big fan of the free credit score that they give you. It's pretty in depth. They'll show you each and every payment over the last two to three years. You can see if a lender has reported that you, are ma you made a late payment or reported that you are owing or in default, or if anyone's ever put you into collections or if there's any outstanding debts in which you owe. And it's great to have this on here because well, one, Maybe you didn't know that you owed that money and you forgot, so you can go ahead and rectify that and then get the company call back in and have that removed from your record. That'll help boost your score. Most people who have the low four and fives and even low 600s, most of the time it's because they have something like that on their uh, credit report. Now, oftentimes it's an error. Um, more often than you might think, lenders make mistakes. So for instance, I was looking back on a, on a credit card and I made a payment on time at 11 p.m. It was due at midnight and it actually did count. It was instant through the bank account, but the lender had an error because it was a holiday and they reported it as late. Now I was able to call in and get that removed and get that reversed by showing that I had made my payment on time, but the lender made the mistake and so they had to update my credit score effectively. I've also had lenders make mistakes and put applications in without my permission to open credit cards and things like this. 
you know, customer service people will call you and say, hey, do you want to open this credit card? And you'll say no, and they'll put the application in anyway. So those things have impacts on your credit, and it's good to look for those sorts of errors. Maybe you had a collections case where someone put something uh, against you, and that went through to collections, and now you owe that. It was $2,000, let's say, hypothetically, and you went and paid that off. Maybe the lender never updated your credit report. And so that looks like you still owe that $2,000. And that can have a hundred point even more impact on your overall score. So go ahead and find out if there's errors. Find out if there's things you can do to improve your score by getting your report. And as always, I like to gamify everything that I do because you know I'm a gamer, guys. And I'm a big fan of watching my credit score change and grow over time. I've watched the roller coaster that is my credit score over the time where I was buying over a dozen properties. I would watch as I bought two or three properties in one time and opened many lines of credits. I'd watch my score go from the, you know, 820 down to like 730. And I've watched those jumps as I've utilized credit to do good in my business and to grow my real estate portfolio. But it's interesting to watch how your credit score gets impacted by that. And then the months after I would go and work on recovering my credit score back up. So that's what I got to say about the credit score. Let me know in the comments. If you guys watch this video and you found value and you're enjoying the new camera, guys, I upgraded if you notice the lens in my camera and a brand new camera and we have new lighting kits. If you're enjoying the quality of this video, let me know. And if you got value from this or you know someone who wants to improve their credit score, they're looking to buy their first house, they're looking to buy their first rental property, they're looking to expand their business and they need lines of credits, maybe they just want to improve their credit score so they can get that better job, so they can go in and uh, you know get that better apartment downtown, that really awesome place, and they want to show they have a really great credit score. Share this video. I really appreciate it. As always, guys, five actionable tips. I'm going to give you five actionable tips that I'm going to finish with my three catchphrases, three, lev three levers. Automate, prioritize, diversify, age, and monitor your credit. There you have it. In five words, you have five steps. Go and do it. There's the call to action, guys. And as always, I'm going to help you guys on my channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Mike Rosehart, and I do a lot on personal finance, fire, and real estate investing. And I love to talk about anything you guys want me to talk about. If it's within my wheelhouse, I'm happy to do a video on it. And this one was actually recommended to me by an actual subscriber who wrote me a message on Instagram and said, hey Mike, I would love if you did a video with five actionable steps on how to improve my credit score. Well, here it is. This one's for you. As always, guys, unlock a wealthier you by controlling the three levers that control your financial future. Spend less, earn more, and maximize returns to unlock a wealthier you. Cheers. Woo! That was not a bad video. Automate, prioritize, diversify, age, monitor. Hopefully you guys got value from that. The five steps. A-P-D-A-M. 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 Maybe I should do a rap. How to improve your credit score. How, five steps to improve your credit score. Automate, prioritize, diversify, age, monitor. Those are the five steps that you got to take to improve your credit score. This See you guys.